How are y'all doing? Hey, Dana. How are you doing? Living the dream. Yeah. So I, uh, so the community colleges around here are opening back up. They're starting classes on Monday. One of ours uh, in Elizabethan, Tennessee, about 50 miles from here, actually started last Monday. Wow. What about your situation? They still closed down for the, yeah. Yeah, for the high schools, they're going to be closed down. And I'm afraid they're going to do something, you know, drastic for the fall. I do too. I've heard December. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I mean, my preference would be for have half the students because I, I just, you know, I can do better with 11 than I can with 22. Cause that's absolutely, I got. but yeah. that doesn't really, that really doesn't help the money in our program. Cause I guess right. we, get, we get funding for each student, but still, I mean, you know, I can, I can teach cheap, you know, I don't, <laughs> So I'm also, I'm also an adjunct instructor for the Walla Walla Community College. They're going back on Monday and I'm going to try, I'm trying to get a hold of my boss to say, well, can I use the facilities to teach my class? Just anything to get back to work. This has been tough. I'm going to, I'm trying to do a, a summer welding program for the high school students. Yeah. The, the, the technical college that here is here. They teach in my, in my, in the building here at night. It's a high school building. But they okay. teach their class at night, but during the day, it's going to be open anyway. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to get it where I can have some students come down, at least make up some welding time and practice on a few things. I'm trying to reach out to business and industry and, and find out about maybe some specific things they'd like some high school students to know, you know, what, what oh. the problem's been in the past and yeah. work on that. You know, if it's just. Yeah, I teach a, I do a summer course, a two week, eight hour day, summer intensive kind of course. And, uh, the businesses they they love it they they cherry pick right from the high school yeah you do it for, you yeah. do it for the high school students yeah yeah and that's and that's what i want to do i'm i'm trying to get some businesses to sponsor it because i got it i've got to do something to make money over the summer i took my salary on 10 months oh no because it was just such a big difference from what i was making in private industry so right so I've, I've got to find some kind of work in the summer and i'd much rather teach you know oh yeah for sure yeah. But everything's kind of chaotic now you know there's no construction jobs you know nobody's confirming or denying whether they're going to do anything you know i kind of thought the spring outage season may have got you know pushed out to summer maybe where people weren't right outages. but then again with the outages you could shut down manufacturing production and then do maintenance you know and, and not have as many people at the plant so i'm wondering yeah i mean have i've been offered to go back into industry but that's kind of a <laughs> yeah i know I know. Yeah, for me, this is my dream job. This is I'm gonna, I'm gonna die here. Yeah, yeah, no, it's awesome. It's great. I always feel like I'm the luckiest welder. I got to do my 25 years in the field, and now I get to finish out. Yep. Came full circle. I love it. Yeah. Love it. I was doing. I, I drug up from a six-figure job, 15 minutes from my front door to come up here and teach for community college. It didn't work out with the community college, but you know the the money I was born broke and naked, so I'm winning really big right now. Somewhere. I know the school was like when they called and asked me about this job they're like you know well it, it was a huge pay cut and the, uh, and you and you came in as a teacher already getting paid more than like traditional teachers and so um, I, somebody said one time he's like well you make a lot of money right and I went <laughs> no 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 I don't no I don't I pick up a lot of extra hours I teach OSHA I don't know if you can get in on that that's been a real good thing yeah, I've thought, I'm trying to, I'm developing an online class now for CWI. Uh, yeah. No matter of fact, the first one I'm going to do is just on AWS book of specifications. Oh, good. Try yeah. to do it and, you know, see if I can generate a little rate. I, I don't want to leave home. I like, I like mama and I like the dogs and I like being in my own, my own house. Yeah, so absolutely. If I want to see the world, I'll look in National Geographic. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm four minutes from work. Oh, that's, that's nice. Hi, Swish. Hi, hi Dina. How are you? In India, all right. Yeah. yeah. Things getting any better? Any better there for you in, in India? Are they opening things back up yet? Yeah, almost uh, many states. The the lockdown is released almost to fifty percent. I don't know how many people show up today. I didn't. I didn't advertise as much the same because I sent out like a hundred emails of the people that had already been to them last week. So, 
I think people just like it because it makes you feel a little bit more connected. I mean. Oh, I, I mean, I love, like I said, if it's just three of us, I'll find something to talk about. <laughs> yeah. We had to do our advisory committee with uh, three people. Oh, it was really? great. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff talked about and done. Yeah. Yeah, we had our AWS section meeting. I, I'm the section chairman, and, and I kind of dropped the ball through March. Uh, right. The last meeting in February, I did, a, I did a presentation on certifying welders. But anyway, the uh, I dropped the ball in – or no, I dropped the ball in April. But anyway, we, we suggested an online meeting, sent it out to all 230 people. There was three of us last night. Yikes. So Yikes. Yikes. I was kind of, I, I was actually expecting a bigger turnout than we have for our face to face meetings because we're spread out over a big area and it's mountainous and that kind of stuff. And I was thinking, well, maybe some people that want to really <clears throat> talk about what the section's doing. And, and it's actually the, the purpose of it was to nominate officers. So it would have been a good time for anybody to log in and say, oh, I nominated so and so. Yeah, we have our student chapter um, Thursday. I better check. I think it's on Thursday. And that's everybody will log in then, hopefully. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see. So everything's back to normal in India? Yeah, almost 50%. 50% of the states, and the lockdown is released. So we are expecting another 15 days or 70% days. Oh, how big is your class? As is, uh, it is closed for last two months. Oh. I am, yeah, I am contacting uh, our students through our uh, uh, YouTube or WhatsApp, like that. And uh, sometimes uh, our group, we have some group. They are conducting classes through webinar. Also. Sumika. Gina, are you in or you're at Northwest somewhere, aren't you? I'm in Washington. Okay. Yeah. Now did you guys actually have a, a required lockdown or was it was it suggested and everybody just followed it kind of thing? Uh our governor did it and it's not going over well. I mean, I'm, I'm in Eastern Washington. I'm like three hours from Portland. And uh, so we're, I'm, I'm three hours from Seattle, three hours from Portland. And they obviously had much bigger incidences. Yeah. Over here, we haven't had anything in the last, no new, I think, I think a total of like 70, 70 confirmed cases or alleged cases or something like that. And we haven't had any new ones in the last uh, couple of days. And so they're trying to do variances, which means that they'll let us let, let certain counties go back go back up. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's been a mess though. I mean, I don't want to be I don't want to be like I don't want to not take it serious. But the people around here, they pretty much everybody just kind of goes. I don't even know somebody who knows somebody who has it. I think it's definitely related to the to the environment that you know, how much, how crowded it is, that kind of stuff. I mean, I, right. you know, I don't, I don't know anybody here that has it. I mean, I've heard of people that have had it, but it's just from the news. You know, I don't yes. know anybody directly that knows somebody that's had it. I think we're down to, there's two active cases right now. In your county? In our, in the, in the county, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's got to count for something, right? Yeah, I think there was 46 altogether, and I think the other ones, I just I haven't checked them again. It gives us two week wait to check them. I had two, I think we, we had two deaths in the whole in the whole county. Oh wow! Yeah. I'm looking at your website, uh, uh, Suresh. Yes, uh, you can you can use Sumeka Welding. Dot org. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. You're the founder. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Did you have a really big need for uh, qualified welders over there? Yeah, we need our industries are demanding more welders, but nowadays, no, the the skilled communities are not ready to go for the same same skilled work. So they want to go for higher studies. 
so we are getting uh, many shortage of skilled people even if you give free training to our people only some few people are coming for taking trainings hey congratulations on your awards okay good thanks thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> i would like to get some ndt go nd um uh i want to get some non destructive stuff going i that's been a hard one to sell over here to get them to get the equipment in and to get the people in uh we found i was cleaning out the the storeroom back here and i found a uh the panometrics epic 3b which is an old ut not a you know, back when I started fiddling with it, it was a new one. It was, you know, it just started coming out with digital machines. Battery doesn't work on it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually use it for grading groove wells before I cut. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Kind of like that. Very cool. I know, like all the employers, when I came over here, there was such a glut of um, stick welders that uh, I had, what I, so the first thing I did was I got a, a really strong advisory committee. I started calling all the local businesses and got them to come in. And they all wanted people who could run MIG and everything. I'm on a couple advisory boards too. And I kept hearing from people, it was like, could, we don't need them to run oxyacetylene. Could you please get them using plasma? And, and so your, um, your article, I've been kind of trying to say that as nicely as possible for over the last four years and it's yeah. it's been rough but the but I, I get away with a lot because the industry backs it if the kids are getting hired how can they complain you know yeah that that's it and that's what I'm hoping that I'll get going here you know I got a little bit of negative feedback because I my first year students we start off with MIG welding uh -huh. their first introduction to manufacturing we're we're pulling the trigger on a MIG gun and you know, there's a lot of, well, that's not how we do it. That's not what the, the state standards say. So I called the, the fellow at the state. I said, look, I said, this is an introduction to manufacturing course. I said, you explicitly list SMAW as the process. I said, there's not a manufacturer in the state of Tennessee or in the rest of the country that's making money manufacturing consumer-based products using right. stick welding. And he said, oh, you can, you can use whatever you want to. So that's, you know, I, and I've yeah, talked I to the guy regularly. So... I'm, I don't have to worry about flag from that end, so I'm going to kind of do it, you know, do it yeah, like I want yeah, to do it. You so, should. Yeah, they, um, they said, well, and, you know, anybody can, if you can stick welds, you can do anything. I'm like, well, not really. Well, so. if you can ride a unicycle, right. <laughs> you can ride a bicycle, but I'm not going to start my kids off on no unicycle. I'm not going to do it before the doctor bill. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Sounds like a same problems all over. Yeah. All right, I'm not going to get it. You know. I'm going to jump off and, well, I'm going to stay, but I'll shut myself up now. Hi, guys. Nice to see everybody. Hello. Uh, can you hear me, Gerald? Yeah, I can. I'll keep talking now. Can, can you hear me okay, Gerald? Yeah, I got you, Dan. Okay, good. Turn this stupid alarm off here. Kim, how are you doing? You got it where you can uh, turn your mic on? Were you able to get through the technology? Yeah, I got it, Gerald. I uh, just was moving. I was outside. I figured I'd better move inside. Yeah. Hey, Appreciate Gerald? you guys. Yep. Yeah, Gina. Uh, were, you, did, were you able to get in contact with uh, Mr. Jeffus? Yeah, well, yeah, we've actually talked quite a few times. I've I've really enjoyed. Matter of fact, he said he said he's going to be here today. Matter of fact, I'm the uh, the course I was talking about that I'm doing that I'm going to try to set up online for the book of specifications. I'm going to have 
him just kind of go through it, you know, more for the, you know, is is the material learnable the way I'm presenting it more than it is, you know, the kind of stuff. But it's just it's just about that AWS book of specifications, how to use it. But. Has he introduced you to uh, Neil Manfield no. out of uh, Massachusetts? No. -uh. He's he's quite a he's quite a character. I'll I'll see if I can't get that connected yeah. to. You. Yeah, but I've I've talked to him once or twice and uh, and you know enjoyed. I could pick his brain for quite a while. I said, yeah, I'm, it's great. I'm in all, all the all the experienced welding instructors that come on here. That's it's just it's just good to hear some of the different stuff that's said. Right, right. Gerald, how many uh, students do you have in your class? Do you have, have more have, class? I have a. In any one given class, I can have up to 25. The most that I had this year was 22. And then altogether, I've got 62 uh, between all three classes. I teach two one hour periods in the morning, or, you know, hour and 10 minute periods in the morning that are uh, introductory classes. Then in the afternoon, uh, it's about a two hour and 20 minute class. And it goes anywhere from a second semester to actually a sixth semester of experience. So it's a kind of a wide range, and, and this is my first year doing it, teaching teaching here and teaching high school. So I'm hoping after after about two or three years, everybody will be used to me, and, and I'll kind of be able to to help develop them from the beginning. And then if they're not able to weld, then I know it's my fault. Yes, yeah, my third year, so uh, I'm still developing it, and uh, but I. You can build good relationships and, and help some students. Yeah. So, uh, One of the biggest things I was surprised about is how much I didn't like the winter break at Christmas. You know, I, you know, being in the industry, I'd always think, oh, yeah, it's going to be nice. I'll be off for Christmas. I'll be off for the summer. I, I would have rather been here with my students teaching. You know, it's, this is my fun place. Yeah, I feel the same way. It is sort of nice having the summer off now that I'm on my third year, though. Yeah. Uh, but they keep in contact with you, and, you know, you build relationships, and they're sort of stuck with you for the rest of your life, you know, because they'll call you. Well, that's that's actually how I was. My my high, Matter of fact, I just made contact with the, the vocational center in Memphis that I was part of when I was in high school uh, through their director just asking to put me in touch with the instructor because I've got to do some type of PDH where I go outside of our school and, and shadow them. So I'd love to go to Memphis back to the high school where I was at and, and talk to them and, and see, you know, see that program would be great. So she's going to get me in contact with them, which is going to be, you know, going to be good fun if I can make it happen. Yeah, that'd be pretty neat. But my, you know, talking about that, my, my high school welding teacher, you know, I've, I've kept in touch with him until he passed away. Uh, you know, I was real close to the family. We went hunting to get all that stuff. And, you know, I know those relationships just happen sometimes, but but he was, you know, he wasn't even, a, I don't think he ever showed me how to weld uphill with a 7018, but he encouraged me enough to keep back there trying and telling me what to do. He was an aviation guy. So, you know, he showed me how to TIG weld aluminum and he set up, you know, MIG weld for thin stuff. But wasn't much of a stick welder, but he got me where I was interested in it. And boom, it worked. I've been stuck with it ever since. Well, it looks like it's about time to start. We're going to start a little bit early today. I've got a I've got a staff meeting at two o'clock, so I figured we could uh, go ahead and get started a little bit early. And then, if there's still something to talk about after after Dan gets done, we'll uh, you know we'll talk about it some. We've got about 12 people here. I didn't send the meeting <clears throat> the meeting requests out the same as I did last time or, or advertise them quite as much. Let me get the questions up here. We'll get the obligatory PowerPoint up on the screen, then I'll pass it off to Dan here in a second. Okay. 
So I think we've got a, a few new people here. Uh, I appreciate y'all coming. I appreciate y'all returning that have already, you know, you knew what to expect and you still came back. So that's awesome. Uh, the, the presentation day is going to be by Lincoln Electric. And again, we're starting early, but we should have some time to talk about some general things when we get done. If I can make this to click. If you don't mind, take a few minutes and write your name into the chat box. <clears throat> We've got record of you being here. And, there, you, know, uh, you know, Dan from Lincoln may want to reach out to you if you got some specific questions. So if you'll put your contact information, if you don't mind being contacted, in that chat box, that's a, that's a pretty easy document for us to save. It's actually automatically saved off of Zoom meetings. And you can, of course, just copy and paste the text yourself if you want to. But take a, take a few minutes and, and put that information in there. And I'll try to monitor the chat box as we go through the meeting. And if there's any specific questions, I'll, you know, I'll stop Dan. And of course, you can stop him too. You know, there's not so many people here where it's going to be a big issue to, to, to just stop, raise your hand, ask, you know, ask if you can ask something. Uh, I do ask that you turn your mics off during the meeting just so the background noise and uh, the echo from your computer will stop. And uh, I say that, and more than likely, I'll end up leaving mine on here in a minute. It's just the way that it happens. So what we're going to do is going to go through the presentation from, from Lincoln Electric. We're going to go over the questions on the Google form. Uh, about 15 people signed that here, filled that out. I think three or four, uh, you know, actually put some questions on there, and I've got a slide made up for those that I've got to write now. Other thing I'd like to talk about, if you can be thinking about now, is what are your plans for the fall? Have you been, have you had anything confirmed that you are or you're not going to be able to do? That'd be good, you know, good talk for, for me to hear. You know, one of the topics that was on the phone quite a bit was the idea of without well, you know, yeah. on without actually well. And anybody that's got anything that they've done, love to hear what that is. And also, uh, you know, I'll share my yeah. concepts on it. Right now, anybody got any, want to introduce yourself? Take like a couple minutes. Sound like somebody's talking in the background. I'm Cameron Moran. Hey, Cameron. Uh, I've been on, well, actually, I haven't been on for a couple of weeks with Gerald now, but um, I think I was on the first one, and I'm from Oregon uh, in the same boat as everybody else. You teach, you teach what, community college or high school? Or? Yeah, I teach at uh, Lynn Benton Community College. So we've got a one-year degree and then also an associate's degree that's possible. Yeah, we have a welding and fabrication side. And now we also have a specific pipe welding program as well. Anybody else want to introduce themselves? I'm Larry Jeffus, uh, retired welding instructor. I uh, got 40 years in the classroom, made it out a lot. And uh, the background is the house I'm having built. Wife and I live in a two story, and our knees over the years have gone by the way. So, we're looking forward to being able to move into that one story when they're finished with it. Yeah. I'm in the Dallas area. Anybody else want to share? Larry, did you write the uh, welding textbooks? Yes, I'm the author of, I've got about 600 books total published over the years. I've been writing since 1977. <clears throat> I do all the writing, I do all the welding, I do all the photography. I appreciate that. And I put my contact information out for anybody who wants it. Uh, you can reach me at Larry at Jeffus .org, uh, and or give me a call. And uh, Gerald would post my contact information. You're certainly welcome to give me a call anytime. Uh, happy to work with instructors whether you use my books or not. I'm all about trying to get better welding education. Yeah, and, that, and that's that's what I'm here. That's what we're all here for. I'm hoping. I you know I think it's I think it's great that you you come back and visit with Larry's. But I want to tell everybody, don't bother him a whole lot because that's kind of what I want to do. So you know, if everybody's <laughs> calling him, I'm not going to be able to get any time in. I've got stacks and stacks of stuff to talk about. I appreciate. Uh, actually, I'm I'm happy to hear from anybody at any time. Yeah. Anybody else want to introduce themselves? And we'll have and we'll have some time to talk when we get done. But go ahead, yeah, go ahead, Jody. 
that you? Hello. Well, hi, I'm Jody Lancaster, but no, it wasn't me. <laughs> oh, well, it is not. Okay. <laughs> I think that was me. <laughs> I'm Kevin Granton from Lexington, South Carolina. Okay. Uh, Larry invited me to this meeting. Cool. Well, welcome. Welcome to everybody. and We'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to... Uh, Pass it over again. If you have any questions, put them in the chat box and I'll try to bother Dan. I know that it's hard to manage, you know, doing a presentation, looking at questions. And I've got I've got two monitors set up, so it'll make it a little bit easier for me to watch what's going on. And again, if you got some background noise or it starts getting kind of funky sounding, just make sure you got your mic muted. And let's see if I can pass on the control. You ready, Dan? Yes. You are now the host. You are somebody. Okay, well, good afternoon or morning, depending on where you're from. Uh, let me get this here. Everybody see that? Yes? Yep. Okay. Good. Well, good morning or afternoon. Uh, my name is Dan Klingman. I work in the technical training department at, at Lincoln Electric, uh, based out of Cleveland, Ohio. Been with Lincoln Electric for 20, 26 years. Uh, University of Lincoln Electric, 26 years. Started uh, in the manufacturing, or I went to Lincoln Welding School first, and then I started in the manufacturing position as a welder. And when I was hired, my boss told me that this, this application is gonna go to a robotic application in six months. Sure enough, it did and continued to work in the plant doing manual welding and, and learned a lot about the robotics for about four years. Then went into our application engineering as a techno technologist and did a lot with the robotics still. We had one in there too. Then started doing a lot of traveling, started doing a lot of the AWS shows and demonstrations and things like that. And then I went on to automation division as a technologist. So now doing applications, but everything was done robotically and specialized in a couple different processes. Uh, the uh, GTAW as well as Tandem MIG at the time was just coming out. So uh, did that. And now uh, going on about 16 years in the training department. And when I started in the training department, I did a lot of the distributor training programs at that time, educator workshops. Now my main role is the manager of the educational programming, which includes the skilled trades program which I have been working on nationally for the last 16 years and doing a lot of instructor and training the trainers with the iron workers, the, the boiler makers, the sheet metal workers, the pipe fitters, all of them nationally, as well as supporting our motorsports group with trackside welding at Indianapolis and various other events. Today, I wanted to go over some of the educational materials that Lincoln has to offer. And as instructors, we're trying to provide as much uh, supplemental information, if you will, or online content to try to make your jobs as easy as possible. So I just want to do a quick overview of some of the things that uh, I'm going to cover. Maybe. Uh, If I can get the slides to transition, this is, oh, here we go, got it. So I want, the first things, obviously the best things are no charge. Lincoln's been around 125 years. We've had a welding school since 1917. We have a huge library of technical documents and training materials for no charge. So as instructors, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, uh, we've got a library that is accessible to you at no charge for your students. And I'm going to cover some of those as, as well as low cost. And the low cost stuff comes from basically the JFLF, the James F. Lincoln Foundation, which is our nonprofit arm specializing in welding education and promoting welding education. The third thing is our online portal. Some of you may be aware of it. Some of you may not be. Just want to make sure we, we're familiar with that and what that offers. 
also then we'll move into the online training. And I've also got Renee Schultz. She is based out of the state of Washington and she is in our education group as well. She's one of our educational specialists, uh, especially in the uh, ULink offering. Then the last thing, I'll just give you an overview. If you've not been to Lincoln lately, uh, we did just build a $35 million training center here in Cleveland that you are all more than welcome to, uh, to, to, uh, to see or visit and to actually look and see what you guys have actually invested in and, and where we're going with it. So with that, objectives. By the end of this, I would like to be able to have you identify what the supplemental training resources are that Lincoln has and also differentiate between some of the online courses and, and how they differ to see which one may be uh, best fit you, if you will. We've got a whole portfolio. I mean, you guys all know that. We're going to focus on, on this one right here, the instructor resources for today. Uh, but again, we cover the whole, the whole gamut. And that's what's very unique about Lincoln as a one manufacturer under one roof that has all the different aspects of welding tied to, tied to it, especially now with all the subsidiaries that we've, that we've purchased. A lot of people don't even realize that we're in certain areas of the, of the business that we never were in before. So uh, keep that in mind. <clears throat> when it comes to arc welding safety, which is definitely a part of all of our programs. I know on the Lincoln side, it's the very first thing that we teach and instill into the students. All of these materials are free. The ANSI, or I'm sorry, the, well, the E205 is a condensed version focusing on arc welding well, for a uh, condensed version of the ANSI Z49.1. We also have a interactive DVD, which is now actually online. When that first came out, we kept getting requests. Hey, I have a class starting tomorrow. Can you overnight me one? Well, pretty expensive to be doing that a lot. So you can actually pull that right from the website and incorporate all the different modules at whatever uh, time frame you want, at whatever pace that you want. Also, the different standards on specialty type things like the, the chromium and things like that. So all of the safety stuff is free and no charge. The other thing are our technical guides, and these sometimes I think are the most underutilized, but they are very powerful documents. If you are looking to teach or even as an instructor for professional development, I highly encourage you to take a look at these documents that are online, free, and you can download them as a PDF. The gas metal arc one is by far one of the most popular. Everything. I've never seen the definition of the different shielding gases broke down and written as well as this was. And that was done by one of our senior application engineers uh, when I was working with them in our, in our applications department. But I encourage you to look at that on page 12, the shielding gases, the different electrodes, the breakdown of the modes of metal transfer, how the gases work with those, the different types of power sources. That document also covers a little bit on aluminum and a little bit on stainless as well as carbon steel. Great document. If you want to focus on a particular material like aluminum, the aluminum GMAW, and it doesn't matter from a metallurgy standpoint and things like that and the base metals, doesn't matter whether you're using GMAW or GTAW, that document will fit into that as well. A lot of great information on the base materials, what to do, what not to do, there's also one that's not showing on the screen that is based on just for stainless steels, and it really gets into a lot of detail. Uh, the author of that was Damien Kentucky, which you guys have probably known him, uh, which was our uh, stainless expert and still is. So a lot of great resources. The Inner Shield Guide, which is the FCAW self-shielded guide, that was just recently updated. It goes into how they're manufactured, why you don't ever put gas over a self-shielded wire, the do's and don'ts. So we just came out with the brand new Submerged Arc Guide, which is a really in-depth guide on Submerged Arc. So I really encourage you to take a look at these. And again, they're free. If you are on the portal, and that's why I wanted to mention the portal, they are unlimited quantity at no charge, free shipping. If you want to order 500, you can order 500. When you go in to order them from the portal, it'll actually tell you the quantity that is available uh, so you'll know. The posters. Hey, Dan. 
Yes. Uh, are those the same? Well, not the same. They're, of course, updated. But you guys have had those TET guides out for a long time, right? Because um, I, I have some that I don't even know what year from the mid 90s that are that are like a white bound pamphlet pretty much yeah a lot okay. of those came from the a lot of those are on our jflf.org but gotcha. there were a lot of them that were like what is what is a preheat and interpass and there's a lot of different ones those are those are from the foundation which in some cases are charges for those okay. these are most recent um, documents uh, separate to the or in addition to those awesome thank you the Posters, again, no charge, unlimited quantities. We had a huge request for these. And I go into a lot of schools and the trades and a lot of them will put these in a low cost frame and they last forever. And they, uh, if you put them on the wall and you tape them after about a year or two, it looks like you taped them to the wall. Uh, but <laughs> they're a great resource for educating. And in a lot of cases, the students yeah. don't realize it, but the answers are right on the wall in front of them or next to them. The, one of the most popular ones is actually the welding symbols and the types of joints versus welds, which is what we, we see those being intermixed in the wrong terms a lot. But these are also uh, free of no charge as well. And you can get the PDF or electronic version of these on the portal when you go in there. So that, that, that's pretty neat too. The low cost materials, these are where a lot of the textbooks that, that have been out, some of them for many, many years, the procedure handbook that's the 14th edition the most expensive book and i'll just give you an idea is 35 dollars, and i believe that is for the procedure handbook the the how to read shop drawings that one actually has been updated that's an old picture the metals and how to weld them is a very well written book especially we we find it used mostly for just uh, explaining metallurgy it's an excellent book for describing the mechanical properties and what they are, what they mean, what can you get out of a 505? I mean, really good detail. The GTAW book was actually, when it was built, was fall under the uh, JFLF. So that's where the gas tungsten arc welding one is. And uh, I'll give you a little sneak peek that that is actually being updated as we speak. So <clears throat> the educational resource portal, this was started what, back in, man, how long has it been now? 15, something like that. The whole idea was that Lincoln decided that they were going to make a huge commitment to education by offering high quality, premium quality electrodes at a dollar a pound. And what we found was a lot of schools weren't purchasing them just for the fact that they couldn't afford them. And they were using, in some cases, subpar materials. So that was one aspect of this portal is to get discount on electrodes. But the other thing is also an, a, a great the discount on the, your, all your PPE, welding helmets, glasses, gloves, wire brushes, and things like that. But also to the welding guides and technical documents and videos that you can't get to as a, uh, from a general public standpoint on our website. So it's more than just getting um, consumables at a discount. There's a lot of different resources in that portal for educators that a lot of times are not sure of. Replacement parts you can even get through there. So a lot, a lot of things going on through the portal. If you, if you, and at the end, I have my email. If you have, I know I'm going through this kind of quick for time, but if you have questions as well and want to dig into something a little deeper, feel free at the end, I've got my email address and, and we can uh, go through it in more detail. When it comes to the online resources, and this is recently, you guys are all aware that this has been a huge, huge topic of how to keep going in the current conditions and still be able to have resources for your students or for you and your students to keep going. And I've kind of put them in order here. The first one, and some of you may have heard of this, this was created just recently, and that was the CTE Coalition. That was started in mid-March, right as we started to leave the schools. It was put on by a group of industry partners, and these are just some of them. There's a whole bunch more, but Lincoln, Mastercam, Haas uh, Machining, NC3, AWS, uh, the list goes on, Caterpillar, uh, many different companies. And what they are, Tooling U is another one as well. 
But if you go to the CTE coalition, what it allows you to do is utilize some of the teaching platforms at no charge for an introductory time. And so one of them avenues is the NC3. The other one is tooling you. You don't have to be a member. You don't have to pay a membership free. It is no charge to have access to all of the online material. What they've done is they have not required the labs. So for the welding and the hands-on stuff, your students, and as an instructor, when you sign up for this, you actually have to take the test and pass those before you're turned on to teach the materials or have access for your school. Very similar to how we do some of the train the trainers. But that is in the short term, one of the quickest and most accessible avenues that was created in this, in, in this quick uh, downturn. And what's neat about them is some of them that, are, that have the certifications tied to them with like the NC3, for example, you can actually achieve the safety, arc welding safety certification. There's a principles of welding certificate of completion. But when it comes to the processes, you can complete all of the online material where really all you're missing is the labs that can be made up uh, when you get back into school. Um, so pretty, pretty neat group that came together really quick to offer some training uh, during this crisis. So that's one of them. And the next one, I'm actually gonna turn it over if we can, Gerald, to, to Renee to talk just to talk briefly about the U-Link and where that fits into this online program. Can we do that? I can just tell you, if there's only one slide, Dan, oh, I can just talk to it and then you can just click through, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, that's good. So welcome, Renee. Hi, everyone. I'll, I, wait, I waited till now to do my intro, but my name is Renee Schultz. I work with Lincoln as well. Um, I've only been there about not quite a year and a half yet, so not quite as long as Dan has been. But um, I work on our education team, and um, I'm an educational sales specialist, so I am a resource for our um, instructors like you guys out in the field, as well as our sales team for anything education. So I'm going to throw um, my email address in the chat box also for you guys. So if you have a question on anything, feel free to reach out to me also, and happy to work with you on it or get you in touch with somebody that can help you with it. But our U-Link curriculum was actually one of my first projects that I took on when I started with Lincoln last year. And it is a wildly robust online-based welding and cutting curriculum. Uh, we printed, printed it out for a meeting that we had, and it is over 18,000 pages worth of content that covers anything from safety through advanced robotics. The great thing with um, U-Link is that it comes with kind of everything that you need for a lesson in a box, if you look at it that way, because it has the instructor materials to help you prep. So it comes with lesson plans um, with objectives built into them. There's PowerPoint tools to help you um, with, in current times, virtual instructor-led type of classes. There's um, student reference material, similar to what a, like a textbook would be that you can assign to students to read at home as homework or coursework at, from their computer. And then there's, of course, there's quizzes, there's engaging e-learning, and it's really, really nice. Um, the great part with this is that you can pick and choose the content that works for you and works for your program. So if you don't have a lot of local industry in your area that does flux core, then you can just touch on flux core a little bit so that way your students have an understanding and you don't necessarily have to use every single asset for it. You can definitely um, take all of the content and build it into what you need for your program and have it fit your needs. And at Lincoln Electric, we are welding and cutting experts. We developed a curriculum as such, but what we are not is we are not a curriculum management expert. So um, we still own the content. We're still developing new content for Ulink, but we've actually come partnered with a company called Tooling U that you see down at the bottom of the slide, and they are managing our U-Link curriculum. So they have a full service and support team that can help you out to get yourself or if you have any other instructors at your, team, at your school trained up, comfortable using the site, help you um, getting everybody in there. It can be integrated. Oh, there we go. Thanks, Dan. 
Um, it can be integrated into your LMS systems, but it has a, uh, like a blackboard and noodle, things like that. So you can um, integrate it into there, or you can use it on a uh, tooling use LMS system that it comes with. There's really impressive reporting that comes with it also. So for some of these, um, let's say, some of the um, assessments that you're assigning students. So if it's 20 questions and you know that the students should be spending some time thinking about the questions, it will even show you how long that student spent on that assignment. So did Sally actually think about her answers before she put them in or did Sally just go through and click A, 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 A just to get through it and hit submit at the end? So they have some really impressive um, reporting capabilities that come with the ULINK curriculum now to help keep track of your grades and also keep an eye out for students that are um, maybe not putting as much effort into the material because we know students would never take shortcuts, but if they should, it kind of helps you manage through that since it is online based and you're not going to be in a classroom with them at the same time. But that is ULINK in a real quick nutshell. <laughs> um, yep, there's the amount of content. There's loads and loads of content. Um, I know some of the really popular subject areas in it is that it, of course, has the main um, welding processes, but there's also things like careers in welding. There's, of course, safety. There's um, blueprint reading. There's um, math and welding, things like that. Um, I'm seeing a question here is that, is this for high schoolers? It's written for a, um, a high school reading level. So we do have lots and lots of high schools that utilize it as well as community colleges and beyond. So it's definitely written for um, high school reading levels and then on up. Yeah, and here's a really great um, overview of some of the, the content that's offered in it. Let me Thank check you, the Renee. chat to see if there's any other questions. Yeah. yeah. And then, Gerald, do you have a question? Yeah, I've always got questions. Uh, one of the things I was wondering about in your existing LMS, the one that's through the system, is there an ability there within that for the instructor to add any of their own content, take bit videos or, or, or documents or something like that where they can, they can add their part to it, or, or, or is that not, not within the ULINK system? So they can. I know. I don't know the specifics on how to do it. Our folks at Tooling, you can do that. But all of these items are also kind of customizable too. So if you use um, a different type of jargon when you're talking about a certain process, then you can take any of those PowerPoint slides, edit them, and then they can get re-uploaded into the system and you can assign them out or however you want to handle it. So okay. you can add, yep, your own videos, your own materials. We have folks that do that. And kind of going on what I was saying earlier, if you're just touching on a certain subject or process and there's more than what you need, then you can go through, cut out what you don't want, and then re-upload that content and work through it that way. So, because the PowerPoints can be somewhat lengthy, so that is something that you can go, <laughs> go through and adjust for your program as well. Okay. Uh, the modules themselves, is, the, is it... If you're going to use it in an existing LMS, do you have to purchase the whole program or could you just pick out modules and are the seats transferable? Let's just say we, I guess, I guess you would purchase a seat for a year or whatever it may be. Can it be transferred mm -hmm. in say a mid semester? Like with my program, for instance, I have first semester, second semester, second semester, those people that were in the first semester are not going to need a seat. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm not 100% on. I can find out and get back because I know they do. Um, so Tooling U will do semester. You can do, I think, semester or school year licenses. So I'm not sure if you purchase that school year licenses, if it can switch from him to Bill halfway through the year, or if it would have to be two semester licenses that you'd have to purchase. Because they do, um, their pricing structure is set up with, you can do, annual licenses, you can do semester. I think you can even go down to a quarter. So if you're a high school program and you only teach it one or two quarters out of the year, then you could do it that way as well. 
and then the pricing is kind of all structured around that. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Any other? All right. Well, thank you. I'll, I'll pass it back over to Dan, and then I'll throw my uh, email address in the chat box here for you, too. So if there's anything you need, Dan or I are happy to help. Okay. So building off of what Renee spoke about, again, the U-Link material has been around for, for quite a while. Uh, if your program is looking for a certification part to it, we have the LEAPS program, and that is the Lincoln Electric Education Partner Schools. And this program came out in 2017, and it was, it was it's basically and your school becomes an extension of the Lincoln Electric Welding School. Now, Lincoln Electric's had a welding school since 1917, the longest running, continual running school in the world. And what that means is if, if we're going to say your school is going to be an uh, extension of the Lincoln Electric Welding School and fall under our criteria, there's going to be some pretty substantial requirements to be able to just say, here you go you can put your name on your, on your training. That's what this program was built around. The certification entity that comes with it is through NC3. Some of you may be familiar with them. Welding is who we've partnered with them for the welding. They've never had welding as part of their certifications. They've had uh, HVAC, aviation, precision tooling or precision measuring torquing, snap-on, Kubota, I mean, a lot of other programs for quite a year, quite a few years that, that some of your programs may be utilizing. But we partnered just, uh, in June of 19, we started the LEAPS program with the NC3 certifications uh, tied to it. Those certifications, uh, right now there's, there's, uh, there's arc welding safety, there's principles of welding, which is a certificate of completion. And then there's also a intro and an advanced SMAW, um, GMAW, FCAW, and an intro GTAW. We are also, and we're gonna, this program is gonna build. We are also in the process of adding print reading and also thermal cutting, which would include oxy fuel, plasma, and carbon arc gouging. And we're going to continue to build on that offering of the of the certifications so again continuation of the Lincoln welding school from an instructor standpoint there's a lot of instructor professional development the all the as, as part of the program and the requirements one of those is the instructors would can would attend a train the trainer and the trainer trainers are are a are a uh, combination between NC3 and Lincoln once the trainer attends that train, the trainer, they are qualified to go back and teach the portions that they passed. And we do right now, it's all done in one week. And we, and uh, those of you that get the NC3 emails, they are, we are hosting a vert, the first virtual train the trainer starting in July. So that was just launched and just released, I believe yesterday. So we're gonna continue to do those to try to get schools on board because that was one of the elements that was keeping them from meeting the requirements to start teaching this was to attend to train the trainer. So those are gonna keep moving forward. When the school participates in the LEAPS program, they become a member, a leadership school for NC3. And that's buy-in from the top leadership of the school. It involves a lot of cross communication between the industry partners that all of them that NC3 are part of. One of the unique thing about this program compared to other ones you'll see is it is completely aligned with the industry uh, leaders in these areas. For example, welding, Lincoln. For example, uh, precision measuring, Sterrett. So it is a close relationship and the materials are developed by the manufacturer, supported by the manufacturer, and it's quite a partnership moving forward. So as your school becomes a part of this program, they have access to become a leader in welding education and show their facility and be uh, able to participate in a lot of national level programs with industry, other industries and NC3. So 
there's a lot of uh, cross uh, talking and, and, and development that's done with that. Anything, anything on the LEAPS program before I move on? Yeah, Dan? Yeah. Well, one thing I wanted to mention, I, I sent you a chat about it, but there is a requirement for a certain level of Lincoln equipment. Is that correct? Yep. So I'll go down through the, the requirements quickly. Okay. One of them is uh, that you are on the educational portal and active. The next one is that you, you must have a Lincoln virtual welder, either a mobile, a transporter, a 360. And the reason for that is this program, the learning from a whole different perspective, introducing students to new ways of learning. This is, this is our high end educational program and it really utilizes virtual training throughout just about every module of the program. So it's critical to have one of those to introduce that and engage it into the student with the students. The other one is that the school would be 80% Lincoln equipment as one requirement. So basically based on your boots, okay? 80% of your boots for the processes in which you wish to certify for. And you do have a three year period to meet that requirement. So it's not something that you have to do immediately. But what happens is when you start to go into the program, you work with our local technical reps and we get a plan together on what that three year period uh, looks like. And the last one is to attend to train the trainer. Until a train the trainer is attended, um, where the school is not turned on to be able to teach the certification. And I'm telling you, it, it's not an easy train the trainer. We, we have incorporated a lot of knowledge in this uh, technical technical data we you know we we work with all different entities of of you know the, everything from the FFA to the skills USA to the to the trades apprenticeships and we find that a lot of the fundamental stuff is is lacking in a lot of cases when we see national scores of 20% or less on fundamental tests so we try to add a lot of, we, we know the, the lot, of, lot of instructors are very comfortable in the booth, but we try to also relay the fundamental knowledge um, as well. So there's a lot of, there's homework, uh, there's, there's online testing at night, there's a, the certification program part of it at the end of the, each day of each lesson. It's an intense um, five day program. Those are the those are the current those are the requirements. If that's all virtual, is that correct? It, the, we're going to host the first train the trainer virtual starting on July eighth. And is that so the, the welds? You'll you'll still conduct all of the welds will be done. You're going to ship them to us at Lincoln for inspection. Uh, that was my question. Is that then uh, practically with the natural weld machine or virtual? You'll still have to be. You'll still have to have access to your welding lab and your virtual. There will be virtual assignments during the week and virtual welds that need to be turned in. The the vertex. Once you make a weld, you can download it to a USB, and we could put that right on the nc3search.com with minimal score requirements and things like that. So it will still have a high uh, integrity of training, just as the train the trainer does. Because remember. In order to come to this, we are expecting there, there's requirements on the level of, that the instructor should be at. We're not teaching you how to weld during this program. It's to come and show that you're, you're able to weld at the level for that certification and move on. So that's why it's a little easier to do the welds because it's not a welding course. It's a certification course. Yeah. Thank you. So, It'll be interesting. It'll be the first, I know they're actually starting some of their virtual train the trainers of uh, this week in different areas that they, that they work with. So um, welding will be in July. And the last thing that we also utilize, and this is fairly new uh, in our programs is the teacher aid toolbox. So I don't know how many times you guys as instructors, as I'm teaching a class, I'm out in the weld shop, I'm stealing electrode holders, I'm stealing electrodes, I'm stealing 
tungstens and TIG torches, and I bring them all in the classroom. This is a, uh, it is, it, it's amazing how handy this thing is. And in the bottom drawer, which is probably what I use the most, are the five different types of joints. And it has fillet welds, and it also shows groove welds. And it's very easy to use as a prop to show the students because, you know, the other thing you do is you go out in the shop and you get all your coupons and you put them on your tables and now your now all your classroom tables are scratched to no, you know, no end. And these are actually like a poly type, almost like the samples from the, the CWI exam and stuff like that. So they don't scratch, they're lightweight, easily portable. So it's got a lot of handy tools in there to be able to use for instruction. So the last thing I'll wrap up on here is I wanted to, to, to show you guys what you're investing in. Lincoln has made has built this facility uh, across the street from our main manufacturing plant opened up in January of 18. On the welding school side, if you look to the right side of that lobby area, that's the welding school. There's 175 welding and cutting booths, uh, seven complete central fume systems installed inside. And on the left side, there are closest to you is the advanced training side. There's uh, probably another 80 plus booths that can be all different modularized and uh, three, four different labs. And, and since 1917, Lincoln was not at an AWS ATF. We have now uh, done that. So we are at an ATF uh, accredited testing facility for AWS now. And we are getting some other type of testing equipment in there now, radiographic and, and all that stuff. So we've really built on our, our uh, testing and things like that. Plus there's a whole open lab that can be set up for basically any configuration for pipeline courses and all kinds of stuff. The welding booths, the smallest welding booth is six by seven. Then they go to seven by eight. And then the API pipe is 10 by 10. There's 20 uh, DC generator pipe rigs sitting outside year round that we utilize for the booths inside. Uh, instructors, pipeliner, they can pull their rig in and hook right up. Those are that you see on that mezzanine, those are where the seven uh, central systems are. There's three on the other side. So 10 systems total and they're all running. Um, they're all on the damp automatic dampeners. So they're only running for the amount of students that are welding. Hey, Dan. Yeah. There was a really good question from Gina in the chat box. Okay. Um, I can go ahead and read if you can pull it up there right there about um, are they skillsmanship certs or actual certifications of welds endorsed by AWS or other governing bodies? For so all of the material is, is all aligned with the AWS standards. All of the material has been aligned with AWS standards. The welds align with the AWS welder qualification welds as well. And the neat thing about that program is when a student goes to a company and they say, I mean, and I've seen this student walks in and says, hey, I'm a certified welder. And the company goes, well, what did you weld? What do you know how to weld? What did you take from a knowledge standpoint? Do you know how to set a welder up? the cert that they get has on the back every weld that they tested to so that you know exactly what they took and what they passed all the way up to uh, what would be the the uh, 4g um, plate test through aws if your school is an atf you can add the aws certification to it as well i mean that's that's you know and you and i we all know that I can take that test. It's the same exact test. It's just what, what do you want to be on the, the registration for the welder registration or the uh, AWS uh, welder list? Um, so you can add any additional things to it. But the neat thing is, is it shows them and it, it, uh, it carries with them throughout their whole career, uh, like a resume, if you will. And they have to also, there's an, a performance assessment that is also uploaded when the instructor passes the train the trainer or also the student that has to be checked off by the instructor to say that the student because they're actually given a WPS they have to set the welding equipment up according to the WPS 
and get checked off on that or they can't go any further. So there's a lot of checks and balances with this program that a lot of the other ones don't have. And it carries with the life of that student and it's with him or her on their profile. Dan, I had, I had a question. <clears throat> if, a, if a student, let's just say in the high school is participating in this program and only gets partially through it, does their credentials that are pre-existing transfer over to the next institution they go to if they're participating in institution? Kind of like with the SENSE program, once the student's registered with SENSE, they are always in SENSE. Uh, if it was an NC3 school that was hosting the welding, absolutely. Okay. Yep. And uh, another question Cameron, Cameron asked though is, how much of the power comes from that wind turbine for the school? So that wind turbine was a project that was done with companies or our customers from all over the world. Every piece of that was manufactured by some type of company that we, that is our customer all over the, even all the way up to the wind turbines. That wind turbine produces 12% of that, our, of our power at that Cleveland facility. So That's when you cool. look at our power bill, it's actually a, actually a pretty substantial chunk of it. We actually have one at our school, at the high school. We have it, not that size, of course, but, but it's- Yeah, that, that wind turbine is, it's considered the largest wind turbine of that size in an urban area, which is in the city of Euclid, Ohio. That's one of the size of one that you would normally see in a, in a wind farm out west somewhere. <laughs> That's why I asked. We drive up the Columbia Gorge in Oregon to see hundreds of them, and I haven't seen one in a city before. Yeah, I believe, and I, I know it plus or minus a few feet, but I believe it's about 420 feet to the top of the blade. So, um, Jody, the teacher, the teaching aid toolbox, and Renee, you can, I, I don't know the exact number, but I believe it's right around 4,400, and it can be purchased from the educational a portal. That's about right, give or take. I haven't looked at the pricing it's pretty close. super recently, but that's definitely in the ballpark for sure. And portal, absolutely, you can get it on there. And you can, it's handy because you can take it from classroom to classroom. If I'm going somewhere to do a program at a workshop at a school or a college or a trade, I have one shipped in. It's just, it's so handy to have everything. And what I do, I added to it. I, when I talk about the different electrodes and we talk about the mechanical properties, I, I add in samples of a 505, a Sharpie, uh, things like that, that, that add a little bit extra to it that are, that are pretty neat. There's also all kinds of stick electrodes in there as well. So it has one basically from each group, fast freeze, fast fill, fill freeze, and low hydrogen. And it also has the bare rod. Because if you look at the electrodes that we make, 80% of them use the same core rod. It's all varies by the coating. So we actually have the bear rod in there too. So a lot of, lot of neat resources that aren't, there's a, that are uh, good props for, for teaching. I got another question. You were talking about the, about the posters earlier and I, I use those in some of my presentations. Is there a person, let's just say we wanted to use that in a, in a, in a presentation, in a course, but maybe only use part of it. Is there someone that we should talk to there at Lincoln for getting the copyright issues taken care of that? I'd spoke to someone many, many years ago about using the stuff out of the procedure handbook. And, uh, you know, it was pretty easy. I said, yeah, just do whatever you want to. Is that kind of still the policy with those materials? Not they're out in the public domain, some of them? Yeah, because you can pull that PDF right from the, the educational portal or our website. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, for educational purposes and things like that. Sometimes they just say, you know, just put the credit, you know, which yeah. a lot of people do, but there yeah, there's no issues. Then the other one was, is do you have any plans for the procedure handbook to be revised <laughs> and also come out as a PDF? Very good question. So that project has been on the docket for many, many years. And we actually, had, uh, unfortunately, as we, started that project and that's the way it goes back to having everybody under one roof so i can look on one side of my cubicle and i have a stick electrode expert on the other side i have a metallurgy expert so what the plan was was to divvy that book up to the subject matter experts within our company update those sections bring them back and compile them Unfortunately, a lot of the people that were involved in that project are no longer with us. Um, 
but it, I, I don't have a date for you. All I can do is stay, stay, stay tuned more at 11, but, uh, <laughs> but that, that's all I have on that for now. All right. Last one is, is there a possibility, let's just say if someone's going to buy the procedure handbook or any of the other books, and I'm not complaining about the price of it because I think that they're the best value there is in a written welding textbook that you'll ever find. Uh, but is there any kind of volume discount? Let's just say I wanted to have 25 of them here in my shop for my students to look at as opposed to, you know, using a regular textbook. Is there, is there any kind of discount that comes in bulk with those? I so am not aware of one. one. I am not aware of one. I believe, like I said, the, the, the procedure handbook is $35. Yes. And the engineers that come into our programs, that book on their bookstores at their colleges are over $200 for that book. Yeah, it's the best, it's the best bang for your buck is a, is a printed book that there is, all of them are. Yeah, I know. I got one, most of all tabbed and <laughs> at, at, at a quick reference. The Mills and How to Weldon book, yeah. uh, we use that in multiple classes at the at my college and our the way that our bookstore purchases it it increases the cost of it like i don't know 300 to 400 percent and so i've taught i can't remember who i talked to specifically at lincoln and it was through the portal and she, she just said order as many as you need and we'll get them to you maybe within a week and i think the that blue book is like fourteen fifty or something like that, which is super cheap for the content that's in that book. It's pretty amazing. Yes, it is. I I, I, I use that book a lot, a lot. Any anything else? Okay. Yeah. Well, go ahead. I, no, I, that's all I have. Okay. Well, if nobody's got any questions, like I said, the, the contact information for, for everybody is in the chat box and uh, we'll go ahead and go on with the rest of the, you know, rest of the meeting. Nothing special planned, more just plain discussion. I'll take control back here in just a second. Yep. And I, you know, well, I can say from Lincoln, we appreciate your time and, 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 you know, we're here to try to support you the best that we can. And we, appreciate any feedback to try to make our stuff better and what we provide to you as instructors or as customers. So, you know, if you don't ask, it's a definite no. <laughs> so we encourage as much feedback and to try to make uh, anything as better as we can. And, and uh, we appreciate your guys' support and hopefully see you down the road somewhere. Yep. I appreciate your time. I really do. Uh, so I have a question for Dan real quick. If yeah. You, yeah, I'm going to, this is Tim Greenwell, South Fort Myers High School. I'm going to be in uh, Cleveland on the second and third for the uh, qualification welding procedures. Will you be there then? Uh, on In June or July? June. So, June. Second and third. Yeah, I am actually slated to go back into the office on June 1st. So oh, I should, I, as of right now, I, I will be there. I'd sure like to meet with you while I'm up there. Uh, it just Absolutely. Are you, now, is that one of the courses that, is that the professional series? That's uh, put on by American Welding Society. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, they'll be there. So, okay. you know Lou uh, uh, Kleinsmith? Oh, I know Lou very well, yes. He's a good buddy of mine down here in Fort Myers. He, uh, he's a South Florida rep and uh yeah. I, I spoke to you. You're going to leave your information, your email, and all that. Yeah, I uh, I've known Lou. You know, those of you that that don't know, my my father retired from Lincoln in, in the training department, so he was there for 36 years. So I re, I've known Lou since I was probably five years old. So, um, but yeah, great guy. Yeah, he's been a big help and uh, well, good. Good. Yeah, look forward to seeing you there. Okay. Good. Same here. We'll go ahead and go through the presentation, uh, which again, it's not much, it's just discussion of the things that were on the question, the, the questionnaire form, and just general discussion. I've got until uh, one o'clock or two o'clock, I think, until I've got to go do a, a staff meeting and find out what kind of new, new things I've come across today. Let me go ahead and get the. Gerald, I've got to jump off for a 1.30, so uh, 
I appreciate your time and thank you for in inviting us. Thank you very much. Thanks, for Dan. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Very yep. So real quick, I've got the James F. Lincoln Arc Welding Foundation up here. Uh, you know, that's one of the, that's their site that you can go to and you can actually order the books there or you can do it through the educational portal. They've also got pre-cut welding projects. Let me see if I'm sharing my screen here. Yeah. But they've got the Boy Scout. Can you guys see my web browser now? Yep. But they've got like pre-cut uh, projects for like the Boy Scout merit badge program. They've also got like just like the airplanes here, just different welding projects that are great. If you have any kind of introduction to welding, let everybody come and play one day. They've got those things. They're pretty cheap. Let's see what we got here. You know, 750 for the Eagle, 750 for the plane, and they're just already pre-cut metal. So they're nice little pre-packaged things that you can get. Uh, if you're going to do any kind of demonstration or maybe get some kids come in and see if they're interested in welding playing with fire. So a question from the Google form. Uh, here's, and I haven't checked it since we started the meeting. And I'll go back and look at it real quick. But anyway, this is one of the statements that somebody made. I'm sick and tired of listening to attending meetings uh, that say we have to shift to online. CTAs, hands-on, like welding, nursing, you know, all those things. And we all, we all understand that. And that's going to be one of the biggest hurdles to, to overcome if situation continues as it is, you know, starting, starting in the fall or even over the summer. Uh, so anybody got any comments on that or anything they'd like to share about how they've, what they've thought about that? We have actually several schools in Oregon that have already said we're not coming back face to face in fall. Um, They're going to be doing all online. Um, at, at my school, fortunately, we've been talking about how to do a hybrid of some sort where we're going to be doing primarily all of our uh, lectures um, and, and conversations through meetings like this or recorded content. And then we're going to have scheduled lab times where students are going to be able to come in. Um, let's say a group of 15 students um, for a certain amount of hours for the morning shift and then in the evening or the afternoon, another 15 students, something like that. So it's going to be uh, just another hurdle that we don't know how to conquer yet, but um, we did pretty well with this so far. So hopefully it works out for us. Gerald, I just, one thing I would say is I would be concerned if, if all they're doing is going out in the shop and welding. I mean, there's the knowledge base that's required for the knowing how, not just being able to, is very important. So, I mean, the, the online is a great platform for that, you know. You supplement your own lecture in, in with it in the shop demonstrations. Yeah, that, I mean, that's actually one of the things, I mean, I'm looking at it as almost an advantage to a certain to a certain extent, except for <laughs> the reduced number of people in the shop. But our, our, the traditional way that we had already, had always been done at this school was students didn't get any homework in welding class. I've only got 25 textbooks sitting on that shelf over there that I'm looking at. And I've got 25 seats, but I've got 62 students. So there was very little emphasis put on the technical knowledge and you know, this could, this could all depend on our own individual experience. That technical knowledge for me when I go out as a welder has never gotten me a job. My ability to weld has. So you'll never be able to, to balance the employability, in my opinion, of a welder based on some really, really good lecture content. But the, some of the higher end jobs that I've got as a welder or as a welding inspector, as a consultant, and one maintenance job I had, I had to take a written exam for it. So it's, it's definitely a balance and we've got to do them both. But, you know, again, it's, we can't, I don't think we can make a, a big paradigm shift to we're going to just learn more online to make up for what we're missing in the shop. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't, I don't think there's a physical way to do that, but it is a way that you could really build some good technical knowledge in some students that will, those that like decide to go into engineering or decide to, you know, to advance their career, that, that good old, you know, 
that background knowledge can help. And it can help as a welder too, don't get me wrong. But I don't, I don't think we can replace the shop time that's gonna be lost, in my opinion. So we gotta turn to chat. Uh, just to add something, it's uh, Phil from Multi Training. We're actually having an issue with the students having access to online, uh, uh, whether there's notebooks or laptops and, and so forth, or even working during this period in time. Uh, but when everything kind of gets back to normal, um, you know, they've asked about, you know, are they going to be doing online um, again? Because they're not actually, uh, they don't prefer the online curriculum. Uh, they actually like the instructor, uh, the instructor led portion of it. Um, so th like what we've been doing is uh, the online um, through the uh, CWB online portal, uh, but also webinars, like you mentioned before, doing the webinars with them, making sure they understand the information. But I think one of the things in our classroom right now, we're not running, but uh, we're looking to put up uh, certain protection uh, for every table. Um, but again, we're limiting the amount of people within the classroom as well. Anybody else got something to comment on that? And that, that's a that's a big topic we could definitely talk about. And I've got a I've got an hour left. Or no, thirty minutes. I'm sorry. All right. Well, so um, so I'm kind of running into a situation where my boss is telling me to start paying attention or start being pretty. Uh, careful about my budget and so uh, coming up next year because I'm not sure about funding and all that kind of stuff that goes on so all the what am I trying to say so the companies that we've been listening to they all sound like really great but how do we get during these fiscally tight times how am I going to get my admin to buy in that I need to to purchase these things when they're already saying be very careful because we don't know what's going to happen next year with your budget. Gina, I think that's going to be one of the biggest things that's going to hold all of us up. And, and I think we've talked about it in some of the other meetings. You know, in, in my brain, I'd love to have 500 welding instructors network together and, and creating content that we can share. You know, the, the copyright thing really is kind of a, kind of a difficult and, and tricky area. So to, to collaborate as a group and develop materials that we could all share amongst ourselves, to me, would be one, one good way to do it. That's not an overnight fix, though. That's not something that could be fixed for next year. Right. But there, you know, there are some resources out there. You know, we talked about the open book, but it just doesn't lend itself to instructor involvement. But I, I think we're going to come across some hurdles that are going to be pretty high money-wise if, you know, if I can only have half as many students next year, and of those, they can only weld half as much. The, the whole funding model is going to look way, way different. Let me let me ask this question, Gina. Have you ever taken in any business to, you know, get any more income for your your uh, classes itself and not have to worry about going through an administrator? Uh, actually, yeah. And uh, so that's kind of funny that you asked that. So um, I have, you know, so much in this, like a 506 account. And I have so much of this in my 502 account. My 506 is what it was when we take in business. That's where it all goes for like ASB and we can buy whatever out of it. They're already telling me to, to hold on. Don't spend that. You know, be careful because the next year. So uh, yeah, I can, but if I, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess I just, um, you know, the budgeting is going to be an issue. And uh, yeah, we're not going to use as much consumables but um, it, yeah, it's, it's got to play out somewhere. And I don't even know that my admin would, I don't, I don't know, I don't really know. It's just kind of a problem right now is they just keep bringing up the budget, budget, budget. And I have two different, two different accounts to pull from, but I'm told to leave one alone. So it's kind of where I'm at, kind of where I am right now. I've had some conversation with, um one of my well my assistant dean and so gina you you said you're going to have a reduced amount of material use on the college side where we're training for jobs welders are essential and so 
um, we're actually looking at a possible increase in our enrollment at the college level because there's a lot of individuals that are out of work right now and they're going to look for something that's going to kind of play them in a, in a position where they're working consistently, uh, whether this flares back up or wh whatever it is. And so if that's the case, if they do cut our budget, uh, I don't know what we're going to do. Luckily, we have a lot of good industry support. And, and so we can get pretty creative with what we're going to use for coupons, um, whether it be they're going to be cutting practice or whatever, and then they'll weld on it. Um, but depending on where you're at and, and kind of the level that you're teaching, I think that's a, a big situation for everybody. Right. And I, and I see a lot here in the Midwest where a lot of companies will donate their drops to like local high schools or even colleges in your say, uh, Cameron, and uh, they'll let you weld on it and then you donate it, you give it back to them and then they get to scrap it for the extra filler. So really all you got to come out of pocket is the filler. Yeah. So when we went to, so like I, like I was referring to some of these companies like Lincoln, uh, you know, the, uh, what am I talking about? The leaps program, train the trainer and all the other ones. That's where I, I kind of, I'm like, I don't think my boss is going to say, yeah, let's hi let's, let's bring in a virtual reality welder. Now that'd be this great timing for that. So definitely not. Yeah. And, and we're, we're reluctant to just partner with somebody too, because we want to be able to use as much content as possible. Yeah. Um, and so if, if we went with, well, we can't really go with Lincoln. Our shop is 95% Miller and they actually came out and looked at it and they said, well, this isn't going to happen. Yeah. And you um, can't just go out and re-outfit your entire shop. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so there, there's a couple things that I would like to do, like the NC3 content um, after, after we had a, a meeting, was that three weeks ago, Gerald, with NC3, uh, four weeks ago. I actually went on there and they granted me access and I got, I mean, the content is fantastic. I don't know if you've. Yeah, I do. I have that. There. I also have, um, I do have the AWS sense program. I have PS2. I mean, we okay. have a lot of it. I mean, I'm it's, I have the, I have what I have and it seems like all this stuff is, is really great and supplemental to that. I just can't find it in the budget to, you know, buy everything that people are kind of saying buy. Calvin, well, I, free stuff. <laughs> um, I could try. Uh, I know we do give a 20% discount to the instructors. So thank you. You got, you got open book. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, I that, keep pushing that, but, that too. but that's through Miller. That's not through the Hobart side. Yeah. Through the, through the, school, right. through the school side. And because we are a school, I do try to spread it around so they'll get so they'll get exposure to Lincoln, Miller, Esau, Hobart, all of that. It, it gets a little, it just gets a little touchy. I don't know. Um, I'm not comfortable jumping in and just saying we're we're a Lincoln school or we're a Miller school. I don't. I, I it doesn't make me very because you don't know what they're going to go do. You know. So. Well, they're. Oh, go ahead. Well, they're. Tr I mean, on in kind of a quiet notion, they're. Tr I feel like they're trying to get in here too. The, the whole the whole situation with a certification program is this anybody can make one up yeah right there's nothing that says that you can't there is you know there could be the association of welding instructor certification program yep you can that make can that sounds good yeah Gerald's real fine barbecue <laughs> real certification program inc yeah you know so so none of that stuff is, is out of reach to anybody it's right. just who has the funding to get up and get it started that's always going to be a a major uh, a like company and Hobart can do it and, you know, so, you know I, I explain that to people when we talk about certifications anybody can put their name on something and certify that you know that I'm the grooming master for the day right you know I, would, I like your idea about having a network of instructors that have come together to standardize our industry so across the board if my if my students want to leave Washington and go down and work in Tennessee who then want to jump over to Ohio or whatever, you know, it all kind of, there should be a standard. That's how sense started out, but I don't think it was very widely adopted. And it's a, it's a tremendously inclusive curriculum guideline. Yeah. But it's not a, a program. Go ahead, Larry. I was the wondering. problem was with sense is it came on 
after NCCER had already been out marketing and, and pushing their product. And so had they been the first one in the market, there would have been, I think, a, a completely different. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know if I've, I think I've said this in the past. Um, I've, Perkins pays for my students to have the sense program. So it, had, 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 do you, have you seen the, the new uh, sense textbook, uh, Fundamentals of Welding? Yeah, you, I got one just the other day. Yep. And so, I, the like thing, it. so the, I like it a lot. And I like, uh, so the, not to, not to, I don't know. Well, anyway, so I use, you know, Jeff's uh, application of principles and all that stuff. It goes really well with the sense program. They're kind of tied together. It and should. So, I wrote the sense book too. I know. <laughs> I know. So, I mean, I'm, I'm covered that way, but it's just, it's, if I'm the only one in Washington doing it, or if I'm the only one in my little area doing it and nobody knows, then it doesn't really, you know, then I, we need a standard in the industry. So that I, think, um, I think the suggestion about getting educators together, and Gerald's got a good start in bringing like people that. together, uh, yeah. looking at something. I wrote all of the welder certification for Ingersoll Rand back in the 80s and certified all their welders to my standard, which was based on national standards. Uh, and if people recognize that, then it's all good to go. But, but you know, a Larry Jeffis certification might hold a little bit more weight than a Gina Cutts certification, you know? <laughs> well, because so many folks in the industry are even unaware of what a certification is. I mean, so many. It's, 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 it's amazing when a company says, well, I want my welder certified, and they don't know what they're talking about. You know, in my book, a student that's gone through the sense program and completed the, the practicals, the hands-on and the written tests in a, in a well-monitored program that's been making sure no funny stuff is going on right. is way more valuable than somebody that's in my class. Like we, we do AWS certified welder here. That's what I let the students do because they're, they're not the curriculum and the way it's been applied isn't to the level for passing sense tests, to be honest with you. But if I was just the guy Gerald's real fine barbecue grills and trailer hitches. And I had a 19 year old come in and said that I'm a sense entry level welder. And I had another 19 year old come in and said, I passed a, a 2G and a 3G stick test in school. And I'm an AWS certified welder. Here's my card that says I'm an AWS certified welder. Right. My preference is gonna be for the sense student. And the reason for that is the sense student did the two practical tests too as a minimum for stick. Uh -huh. but they also prove themselves with the ability to, to pass a written exam. So I know they've got a certain level of knowledge. Yeah. But when you listen to that, the statement of what it is, AWS certified welder, ooh, that sounds cool. AWS sense entry level welder, that doesn't sound quite as powerful. But in uh, reality, I've, there's I've a- argue, I've argued with AWS over that title. Yeah, I've, I've got a, an article. I've had problems with it getting into their system the last couple of years and i call and nobody ever answers the phone it's months before i get a reply and so for the last two years i haven't been able to certify anybody because i haven't been able to get to their online and if you mail in the paperwork it just gets sent back to you Jody, are, are you talking about with the with the sense program with the sense program I, I can help you with that i mean i can go through the you know i've got access to the to the sense online through through other organizations and can okay. help you with that. Get, get I, I found them to be really accessible. Um, they are on the East Coast, so you might have to, you know, get up a little earlier if you want to get a hold of them. But they weren't we just talking to Evelyn and and yeah. Yeah. yeah they, I've never had a problem. Yeah, they're on again, calling AWS in general can sometimes be a, a difficult thing, but when you've got the contact information for the actual person, uh they're I've 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 found the customer service to be a lot better than I've yeah, look, look at the inside of the welding journal and find a name. Yeah. And the well, department. there's, I want to tell everybody that I, I've connected with a individual, his name's Ephraim Abrams. Yeah. He's, he's, and Ephraim is the, currently is like the uh, customer service manager, so to speak. He's the cat's meow. Yeah. So often, very often, if I'm having a, a lag of response and I copy him on the email, for some miraculous reason, I get a response virtually the next day. And, um, and, and another one for you, Kurt, would be uh, Monica Farr. Uh-huh. 
I think Evelyn uh, runs the whole thing. Or I think she's the department head, and she's pretty she's pretty accessible. Yeah, they they've really they've they have over the past few years really improved their customer service, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and again, sometimes it's knowing the right person to find down there to talk to. But all of the ones that I've dealt with, a few, I mean, the gentleman that, that's in charge of the ATFs, I've got his extension. He picks up the phone as long as I hide my caller ID. Jeffrey's <laughs> <laughs> extension, by the way, yeah. is 333. Three. <laughs> I, I have his personal cell phone number, but I can't give that out. <laughs> one, thing, one thing I'm wondering is, uh, have any of you guys been following the, the accreditation of the SENSE program process? Yes. It's going to change. I mean, I mean, I'm just kind of a, I, I keep asking, you know, because if you use the AWS curriculum, they'll, they'll bypass, you know, their, their evaluation of your uh, curriculum. Um, so I, just asking for costs and stuff, they, they just, they say they'll get back to me when they have it. I mean, where <laughs> does anybody know where they're at as far as um, officially? Because at some point in time, you have, you're going to have to be accredited to actually award those students those four process certifications. The whole, the whole audit system is, is kind of in, you know, in limbo right now. I mean, they've actually got, you know, two different, two different systems that are actually being changed right now. The AWS accredited test facility, the QC 47 was released and pulled back and it's not back out yet. It's going to change some things. And then the QC 21 for the, for the accreditation of the, the sense program. I can't remember how it's titled. Uh, I'm a non-voting member on one of the committees, so I can't, I can't say nothing that I, I mean, I really don't know anything to be honest with you other than what I've heard everybody talk about. But I've seen the document, and it's, and it's a big shift in how it's been done in the past. You know, the audit, you know, in the past, I take 600 bucks, send it to AWS, and guess what? I'm a sense facility. Yeah, I've got access to their online testing. I'm good to go. And in my book, it's worth it to have the online testing, just the fact that a student can go in there, log in, take a test, get grades, and, and have it all. It's just a Moodle site. It's all it is. Right. So, so Gerald's real fine barbecue grills and certification we can have that too but there's there's it's going to be much more difficult i think but the option to use their curriculum and bypass the audit you know can be a very very hasty little nugget because people say audit oh no you know no you're, just freak out but i mean i've been through quite a few audits of different types from naval reactors down to aws atf audits and all you got to do is follow the rules but it yeah. is costly, it's time consuming and getting buy-in from the rest of your administration if they're gonna participate can be, a, can be the difficult part, whereas they'd rather just have the, the easy button and that's it. But there's- so the, the frustrating thing with dealing with administrators, if it comes to getting it certified for the computer program or computer science or medical, they're all in. But I've, I've run into, in my years of experience that getting certification, you know, for the, the welding program that I ran was difficult. Yeah. Where's well, I've, I've found my administration has been very supportive of pursuing it. It, it just seems like I can't get the whole thing rolling, so to speak with, with AWS. And I mean, the, their last I knew, and this was last year was that they were going to give you a, two-year period of time to transition and to me most of that's lapsed but they still don't have the process set up yeah yeah they're still you know again the, the qc 47 for the atfs it was published in 2017 and it's still not out so they're you know they're definitely got some some issues going on that you know that's going in there uh you know and just talking about that, I just saw the chat comment come about nobody trusts the paper. And that is a, you know, that is common with any kind of certification. Anybody can forge any document right now. The nice thing about the AWS Certified Welder Program and even the SENSE program is they're, they're given a unique identification or certificate number that can be verified on that system. It definitely, so, it definitely matters when your students leave your program that they're going, that's your reputation. That's how that, that's how that SENSE certification means anything to anybody. 
Because, you know, I, when I first started it, it took a year or two for local industry and, um, and community colleges and accreditations to kind of go, oh, okay, I understand this. Now, they might not have understood since, but they understood that they had uh, good results with the students coming out of uh, my program that uses sense. Let me let me ask this. I mean, I guess it goes out to everybody in each state. Is the, is there a graduation requirement to have a certification in all everybody's state? Like no, zero. Okay. We have a, we have a funding opportunity for either a sense or an AWS certified welder. Because in the state of Ohio, they just rolled this out about a year, maybe two years ago that there's a point balance that the students have to have before they graduate um, from their high school program, whether it be a certification, um, I believe they also are given uh, qualifications and another one which is outrageous is CWI, which the people writing the curriculum here in Ohio, they don't know anything about what it takes to get the CWI, but that's neither the nor there. But um, they're doing a point-based system where the, some of the schools here in Ohio are sending us their um, welder qualification pieces and we're testing them for them so then the students can have a point base to be able to graduate. Yeah, I mean, it's very, I mean, Hobart has an excellent reputation. You know, I've had students who've gone to you, they've come back to Washington, they've had a, they've had a job the next day. Uh, but at a high school level, we're trying to get our, trying to get people to take a chance on our high school students, you know? Yeah. So that's why we're like, I think the networking and also the standardizing between everybody would be super helpful. Well, the, the state of Missouri has started, uh, you know, we've always had a, we'll call it a certificate of completion from our career center. I'm a high school secondary, junior, senior, two-year program. And part of the state's criteria, you know, it's like a, an academic student you know, has to score on their uh, exams. We have, uh, they have a list of acceptable exams, you know, NCCR, uh, they let you take the Skills USA. Um, and I, right now I'm using the NOCTI, but then the other side of that, there's a practical side of it that they require the student to, um, at first they wanted them to be a certified welder, AWS certified welder. Well, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, un unless that student takes that test in an ATF, they can't send that document, that uh, welder performance qualification documentation in to get their certif certificate card. Well, they could, so they, they they can get, I mean, they could do a qualification. Um, that wouldn't need to be sent in for that. and doesn't gain the same credits as having the actual card, but you still have a qualification. That's that's where they're having the problem here in Ohio. They're trying to get the kids certified <coughs> through the programs. Yeah. Well, well we've, one of the we've got a pretty nice, we've got a pretty tight knit um, group of, of six instructors in our north uh, northwest skills district, and we basically will test each other's students um you know the the pre the responsibility of monitoring the welding process is still the instructor's uh responsibility but we take the coupons and and those are tested by another and stamped by another because most we're all all but one of us are cwis so i have a instructor in mexico missouri his name's scott ulrich he's an atf at his school there in mexico at uh, Heart Career Center. One of the things that you can do if, if you if you do have an ATF near you, the next time they come up for their audit, all the ATF programs that I've ever written, I've written four manuals and, and got four of them certified, is they write into their manual that they can do off-site testing. You do not have to have a cal calibrated welding machine. The testing supervisor can bring in a calibrated amp meter and check your stuff. If you're using Lincoln filler metals, for instance, then the the Q1 or Q2 lot number that's on them, I write them down, I put them into our material identification control system. So you can actually have the testing done at yours if you can locate a, a site to do that, uh, you know, that will do offsite testing. I'm gonna become an ATF and our system will be written up like that. And when I say offsite, 
I could have a test supervisor, especially with a new QC 47 document that's following my system, go anywhere in this country and test a welder. Okay. That's one thing that's doable. And especially if we were to, to be together as welding instructors where everybody knew how to do it again, you can't test your own student, but if there's a network of instructors that have been trained in the quality system for how to do that testing, if they're one of Gerald Austin's ATF instructors or the green technology center is what it's going to be. But anyway, anybody can do it. And I think that there's some good power in that because the whole, the whole ATF thing I've got to go in about three minutes has been kind of a bummer for me because I've helped a few of them that were nonprofits get up and started and they, they don't operate when I leave. You know, not because I'm special, it's just because nobody wants to pay somebody with subject matter expertise in that area. Uh, if we could have enough group to where it could support itself, to me, it's, it's, a great way to, it's a great way to go. The other option, and I've got to go in about two minutes, and I'm sorry I'm going to have to end the meeting because, I don't know, I might be able to do mine on my phone and y'all can talk, uh, is with industry certification or anything. I've thought about designing a welding booth that's got cameras in it where you can monitor what's being done, including a camera that's tethered that you can bring down for close-ups on a weld. Think about that as a resume item for a student instead of, oh, here's my piece of paper says I welded. Because I've, I've tested quite a few welders in, since the 80s. And when I watch somebody weld, that guy that welds out that, two, that, you know, that super coupon from tax to finals in two hours and 40 minutes, is a completely different welder than the guy that does it in four hours and it looks like it was done by machine. Two different welders. Okay, I can watch somebody take a welding test and you can kind of tell, are they a skilled welder or are they just good at taking a test? So there's some value in, in some of those things. And, and again, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to hit the meeting off here in about two minutes, but please, uh, you know, please come back to the one next and we can actually pick up where we got off. We've got uh, Hobart, Coming in next week, is that right? Oh, I think he's already got off. But we're gonna we're gonna do that next week and probably carry on with some of these questions that were in the slides. And I, I apologize every week they tell me my staff meeting is at a different time. <laughs> Unfortunately, now I'm gonna have to calm down because I'm not gonna be as excited to talk about that stuff. And I'll think I'm crazy when I get on there right after this meeting. Well, Gerald, I, I wanna I wanna thank you for all the coordination and efforts you'd put into this. It's when I found out about it, I was like, hey, I heard that guy's name before. And yeah. it was good. It wasn't a bad thing. Uh, well, but I appreciate your support. efforts. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. And I appreciate y'all coming. I really do. And uh, I'll send out, if you if you registered in one of the previous meetings, and I sent you an email this past week, I will send you another email again. And if you're one that just signed up now, I'll, in the next day or so, I'll try to get the information out for this one, the recording and stuff like that. There'll be an audio file and that kind of stuff. But I appreciate y'all coming. Go ahead. Did you post last week's meeting? I thought that I did. I thought I emailed it out to the, to the list with the, the video. Uh, send me, a, put a message in the tax text box real quick. Send me the video, and uh, when I download the oh, view, we'll, we'll go through it. I just well, realized it may not save this video if I start another Zoom meeting. So I'm, I am going to do mine on my phone. Matter of fact, anybody want to be a presenter? Or I'll just leave this thing running. I'll turn my mic off if y'all want to talk a little bit. I'm gonna well, I'm going to have to go, but uh, good luck with your what we call a staff infection there, Gerald. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and close this. I appreciate y'all a lot. Thank you, Gerald. Thank, Thank you, you, Gerald. Nice. It was a good meeting. Right. Everybody have a good, safe week. Peace out. Okay. All right. Well, there's an end meeting right here somewhere.